hi everyone welcome back to my kitchen in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i make my ching ching the yummiest cameroon ching ching so let's get started here i have my ingredients the stuff i'm gonna be using this is my nutmeg i have it in powder form i'm going to be using condensed milk this is kind of like the best milk to use for your baking and uh, my salt baking powder flour i'm using the plain flour not the self rising sugar granulated sugar butter and eggs okay guys so let's get started so i'm going to be putting in all the stuffs in this bowl I'm using just two eggs for these guys by the way i'm going to be using up to three kilograms of flour for this so i'm using just two eggs for three kilograms of flour so break your eggs and put into your mixing bowl just focus on the camera a bit more so you can see clearly what i'm doing butter You guys, I'm really sorry, but this receipt is not for beginners. I'm so sorry about that. Um, for those who have not had an idea on how to to make ching ching, I think I have a previous video where you can watch that one better. This one is actually not for beginners. I'm not going with accurate measurements at this point. I'm sorry about that. So for three, three kilograms, I would say estimate put up to 10 full tablespoons of butter. So here is my condensed milk. I'm going to be using two cans of these. See how creamy the milk looks, and it tastes so good. It gives it gives your baking a very good flavor. This is a second can. This is just making everything easy guys just pour everything inside the bowl everything you need for your mixture so i'm putting sugar one bowl of sugar yes salt a teaspoon of salt up to a teaspoon of salt leveled teaspoon baking soda i'm going to use up to two teaspoons of baking soda baking powder here is a nutmeg this nutmeg gives like the best flavor this is what gives the changing it's it's good flavor so i'm using up to three teaspoons of nutmeg time to mix so we've put almost all the ingredients here apart from the flour so we are going to mix properly with this mixer you can go ahead as well and use your spatula to mix this but I'm using the the electronic mixer for this it makes my work easier So mix it vigorously, mix it properly until everything is all together as a paste. so this is properly mixed i think and uh, this is a paste uh we wanted we can see that everything is all mixed into each other with no separation at all so here we go this is our paste this is how it looks all the mixture everything that we need for our teaching is in here except the flour 
So we're going to start now with mixing the flour. I'm using this bigger pot because I'm using up to 3 kilograms and that's quite a, a huge amount of flour for our ching ching. This is 1.5 kilograms. One packet is 1.5 kilograms. So I'm going to be using two packs of this. This is the next packet, 1.5 kilograms as well. I'm just touching the flats, make sure there are no lumps and making sure everything is uh, in powder. So our flour is all ready for the paste, for the rest of the mixture, let's pour it inside and then mix properly. You can go in here with your spatula, you can go in, like my mixer is quite small for the quantity of flour I'm using. I didn't want to do like two separate mixtures. So that's why I'm going in with my, my fingers for these. If you're using a smaller quantity of flour, you can as well just mix everything in the mixer. So I'm just going to mix it properly and make sure it comes into a dough. At this stage, you just keep adding. The only thing we can keep adding here is like the water to make the dough come together. And I won't say it's a particular quantity of water. You put it and you can feel it in your hands and see if it's still dry or is it too wet if it's too soft you can add a little bit of flour and if it's too too strong or too hard you can add a bit of water so it's just common sense at this stage so you just mix just keep mixing and then so you see that the the mixture is well mixed now we're just adding water now to make sure it comes into a dough form I'm using lukewarm water guys, don't go in with cold water, not hot water, just lukewarm water. So we're going to continuously do this until it's a dough. It's going to take a bit long because uh, the flour is quite much, the quantity is like, it's really much, so it's going to take a bit long for me to get through with the mixture. As I said, you just can keep adding water and you are using your fingers so you can actually feel the texture and know if it's too hard. You can add water as needed. So this is what I've got with the water I added but it's too hard. I'm going to add a bit of water and then mix a little bit more. This is hard guys. Okay, so I've gotten to this stage. This is what I've got. I had to go in with my both hands because <laughs> it was taking me like, it was so much hard work. So this is what we've got into and this is. So this is the final result of our mixture. <clears throat> I'm just going to let this dough rest for a couple of hours. If you want to go ahead and start uh, getting it ready for frying, it's fine. But I'm, I always love to let my rest for like two hours and above. I'm going to let this be here for about two to three hours and then I can come in and start to, to cut them into the size that I want. So I've just got started. So what I do is I cut a bit of the dough and then I flatten it on my board. Some people do have pasta maker which they can use to cut off their dough but I've, I'm just going the traditional way and this is what I usually do whenever I'm doing ching ching. And this is what I would say takes most of our time cutting the ching ching. It takes most of your time. If you have the, the pasta maker good and fine but I do not have it so I'm going in with the traditional method. So you flatten your dough on your chopping board.
you guys don't make it too flat and don't make it too thick either yeah i'm i i think you guys can see like the thickness you can see how it looks here it's not like too too thin and it's not like thick as well else if it's too thick it's going to absorb oil when you're frying it and if it's too thin it could break as well when you're frying you can see how it looks so going to flatten it a little bit more so this is fine I'm just going to cut them up this is exactly what I'm going to be doing with all of the dough so you can imagine how much time I'm going to use pen here to cut this up there are a lot of ways a lot of methods you can use to cut your chin chin depending on the shape you want but I normally love to go in with this shape anyways just going to cut the edge and I'm going to throw that edge away and then so you can see that's what I'm doing and that's what I'll be doing with the rest of it So you just continuously chop this up a similar way as I'm doing. You can use any other method. Some people like just in box shape, like the square ones. Uh, that one is fine, but personally, I prefer them in this shape. So I've just finished doing that. This is how they look. I'm just going to put them on my tray. Can always put sprinkle a bit of dry flour a bit of flour on your tray to make sure it's not too sticky i'm not so bothered about the stickiness because it's still able to separate in oil this is how it looks guys you can see that this is not too like flat and it's not too thick Look, let's get started with the frying so my oil is hot enough you can always put a tiny bit of it to try the oil first like to be sure that it's not too hot if not it's going to burn so i'm just putting mine in here so don't bother about separating the changing it's it's automatically separate while in hot oil You can see how it's separating on its own. You can add or reduce the heat depending on how you see it going. If it's getting to brown quickly, then you know it's not getting cooked inside. So you have to reduce the heat. But if it's not really frying and it looks like it's absorbing too much water, then you will need to increase the heat. So here again is common sense to till it gets cooked fried you can see how this looks it's just continuous stirring and you wait for some time for it to fry you stir continuously until it's the color you want this is brown enough and this is okay for me to take it out just going to drain the oil out of it and then that's what we do with the frying By the way, you can use any oil of your choice, guys. You can use groundnut oil, you can use vegetable oil, you can use olive oil. I went in with vegetable oil for my frying. So you can see how this looks. Not too, too dark in color. It's just brown enough and okay.
so guys this is all what we'll be doing we're going to be repeating this process for all of the chain chain as i said it's quite a large quantity so it's going to take me a bit of time to get through with it this is how it looks i finally finished guys so this is all of my chain chain this is the quantity i made out of three kilograms of flour it's quite huge amounts of chain chain and you can see it's quite crunchy dry and it tastes tastes so so good absolutely great and it tastes i don't know how to explain this unless you're able to taste it whenever you're making your chinchi try to go in with the the condensed milk as i said it makes a big difference in your chinchi thank you guys for watching up to this extent and please do not forget to click on that subscribe button and like the video thank you and see you again merry christmas